This is a Friday Shoes production. This is Lesson 9-5 in our books on page 47, and our target is I can use direct variation to solve problems. Direct variation. Well, when the ratio of two variable quantities is constant, their relationship is called a direct variation. The constant ratio is called the constant of variation. Best way to look at this is an example, so let's take a look at this first one here. It says find a constant ratio. Well, it says the amount of money Robin has raised for a fundraiser for a bike-a-thon is shown in the graph at the right. Determine the amount that Robin raises for each mile she rides. Yeah, look at the graph. You see a couple points on there. Well, since the graph of the data forms a line, the rate of change is constant. Use the graph to find the constant ratio. We take y over x. That's what we're going to do. So the amount raised over the distance. So if you look at those points, that first point you see going up, let me highlight it for you here. This one right here is 215. But we take our y, we put it over the x. 15 over 2. That's 7.5 over 1 if you reduce it. Same with 30 over 4 and 45 over 6 and 60 over 8. Those are all points that are located on this line. And they all come out to 7.5 over 1. What does that say? Simply that she makes, or Robin, raises $7.50 for every mile she rides. That is the constant of variation. All right, you give it a shot here on skydiving. Pause the video. Come back, see if you have the right answer. Two minutes after a skydiver opens his parachute, he has descended 1,900 feet. After five minutes, he has descended 4,750 feet. If the distance varies directly as the time, at what rate is the skydiver descending? Well, let's keep in mind what the rate is. Rate's going to be feet per minute. You're descending in how many feet per minute? So, with that said, let's look at our first one. That's going to be 1,900 feet for every two minutes there. And then also they give another one, 4,750 feet in five minutes. When you divide those out, you get 950 feet per minute. So that constant of variation is 950 feet per minute. So this guy never descends at 950 feet per minute. Now, in a direct variation equation, the constant rate of change, or slope, is assigned a special variable. So that constant of variation, we're going to call k. In words, what does that mean? Well, it says a direct variation is a relationship in which the ratio of y to x is a constant, k. We say y varies directly with x. In symbols, for equations, we have k is equal to y divided by x, or y is equal to k times x, where k is not 0. And the example would be something like y equals 3 times x. And they show a little model of that in our coordinate graph over here. That line has a name y equals 3x. Constant of variation is 3. All right, solve a direct variation. Let's take a look at the dog here. It says most pets age at a different rate than their human companions. For example, a three-year-old dog is often considered to be 21 in human years. You may have seen this or heard this. Refer to the information at the left. Assume that the age of a dog varies directly as its equivalent age in human years. What is the human year age of a dog that is six years old? Well, we have to find that constant of variation. What's that magic number we're looking for? Well, step one, write an equation of direct variation. That's that y equals kx, where the x represents the dog's actual age and let y represent the human equivalent age. So here's what we have. Here's that y equals kx. 21 is the human years, 3 is the dog years, and there's a magic number k, we'll call it the constant of variation, that we use to calculate dog years into human years. And when you divide the, that equation by 3, you'll see k is equal to 7. So y equals 7x would be the equation we'd be using. So let's use that equation and find what y would be when x is six years old. Now, that's what they're looking for here. So what about a six-year-old dog? What would they, how old would they be? Well, take the y equals 7x. Again, 7 is our constant of variation. And then take the 7 times the 6, and you get 42. So we would say that a dog that is six years old is 42 years old in human equivalent years. Many of you have heard that, that it's, it's a, a one-year-old is seven times that. 
or a two-year-old dog is seven times that or 14 years old. Now, they do show in the student tip that you can also use proportions to solve direct variation problems where you write ratios comparing the human equivalent age to the actual age. You can kind of see how they do that. 21 is to 3 is how many is to 6. Solve the math, and you have 42. But using the direct variation, we'd use that equation, y equals kx. In this case, 7 would be your k. All right. You give it a shot. Pause the video. Try this one. Come on back. See how you do. Because a grocery store sells six oranges for $2. How much would it cost to buy 10 oranges? Round to the nearest cent if necessary. Now, I'm going to use the, uh, the direct variation method using the y equals kx. Again, you can use proportions. But in this case, they want us to try the direct variation. So I'm going to let y equal the total cost to buy oranges and x be the number of oranges bought. With that said, let's write the equation y equals kx. We're looking for that magic number. And wouldn't that be nice if we knew how much one orange cost? Well, that actually is going to be k. That's what we're trying to find out. So we know that $2 is equal to six oranges. So six oranges cost $2, but there's that magic number we have to multiply by to get to that $2. So with that said, let's divide both sides by six, and you'll see k is left by itself. And 2 divided by 6 is 0.3 repeating. <clears throat> now, if we round that off, that's going to be 33 cents. What that says is, for one orange, it'll cost you 33 cents. So, knowing that now, we can calculate the 10 oranges. Write down our equation, but we replace the 0.33, the 33 cents, in with, for the k. That's our constant variation. So, we take the 33 cents. We multiply it by 10, which we have. That's what they want to find out. And then we get $3.30. So that is roughly what it will cost. 10 oranges should cost roughly $3.30. All right. Not all relationships with a constant rate of change are proportional. Likewise, not all linear functions are direct variations. How do we determine that? Glad you asked, because here we are. We're going to figure it out here. Identify direct variations. Determine whether each linear function is a direct variation. If so, state the constant of variation. Well, here you have a nice table with information where it says miles driven and how many gallons you have used. Well, guess what? All we have to do is compare the ratios to check for common ratio. We've done this before when we were checking for proportional or non-proportional. So what we do is take your y, divide by your x. Real simply, take your gallons, divide by miles. So we have 1 25th, and then we have 2 divided by 50, which is reduced to 1 25th. 3 divided by 75 is 1 25th, and 4 divided by 100 is also 1 25th. So what would we say? Since the ratios are the same, the function is a direct variation. The constant of variation is that 1 over 25. It's the same. All right, take a look at this one. Same thing, we have hours and earnings, how much money you make after so many hours worked. So what do we do first? Again, compare the ratios to check for a common ratio. Again, y over x is what we're looking for. So we take y, divide by x, take your earnings, divided by hours, how much you make per hour, and you'll see 36 over 2, that's 18 for one hour. And then we have 52 over 4, that's 13 over 1, which is 13 per hour. Then 68 over 6 was 11.33 per hour, and then 84 over 8, which is $10.50 per hour. Ah, I see something a little goofy there. The ratios are not the same. So the function is not a direct variation. Again, the constant of variation has to be this. It has to be constant, meaning it has to have the same value. Our first one in example 3 did. Our second one here did not. Again, it's just y divided by x. Come up with that number. All right, how about you pause the video, come on back, see how you do. Determine whether each linear function is a direct variation. If so, state the constant of variation. Well, of course, the first thing we want to do is compare the ratios to check for a common ratio. So in here in C, we're talking about days versus height, or height versus how many days. So let's take our 12.5 divided by 5, 25 divided by 10, 37.5 divided by 15, and 50 divided by 20. Notice they all equal 2.5 over 1 if you reduce them. So... The ratios are the same, so the function is a direct variation. Now take a look at D. Here's one where it's distance over time. 
Again, distance over time, meaning you're going to take y divided by x. Oops. And you're going to notice that they're not the same. You got 3 over 1, 2.67 over 1, 2.5 over 1, and 2.4 over 1. The ratios are not the same, so the function is not a direct variation. That y divided by x has to be the same for each values given. So what are we saying here? We'll take a look at these two examples. The top one, which is proportional linear functions, and then non-proportional linear functions. They're both linear. They're both lines. And that's what it says here in our study tip. It says, notice that the graph of a direct variation, which is a proportional linear relationship, is a line that passes through the origin. Now, notice the other one on the bottom here, which is non-proportional. It's still a line, but it doesn't pass through the origin. Also, you'll see here, when we take y divided by x, we have the same value. When we do it on a non-proportional, when we divide those y divided by x, we do not have the same value. So again, direct variations are proportional and non-proportional linear relationships are not direct variations. Don't forget, you can always watch this video to get better understanding or look at the examples in the book or even watch some of the personal tutor videos they have for you online on the online textbook. This has been a Friday Shoes production.